The Grand Admiral drew his saber. Sir, he barked, you are trespassing upon the royal airship Bellerophon. With a click, the trespasser folded the wings on his jetpack, holstered the cannon to his belt, and tilted his head to look at the Admiral through his ludicrous goggles. Is it now? he quipped mockingly. Excellent! For a moment I feared that I had smashed through the window of Notre Dame. I'm always getting airships and cathedrals mixed up. I'd lose my hat if it weren't bolted to my brain. The Admiral furrowed his brow, flustered by the scoundrel's levity. He pointed his blade at the mad-hatted man, and began, Sir, hang on now, I haven't introduced myself yet, interrupted the man. I do like introducing myself. The Grand Admiral's face had turned bright red as the man continued in one breath. I am Edward von Arkham, captain of the MHS Hysteria, and known by many and most as the Mad Hatter. The madman's introduction was not necessary, as every man in the Royal Armed Services knew who he was. You must be Grand Admiral Rockface, he continued, not allowing the officer to introduce himself. I must say that your name does you perfect justice. The Grand Admiral clenched his teeth at this comment. Impudence, he spat. Put this vagabond in cuffs and take him to the brig. Three crewmen approached the madman, keeping their pistols poised at his head, but halted in their tracks when their target turned to them, and let out a laugh like a manic jackal. How many guns does this ship have? queried the Hatter. Thirty? Why, that's just as many as my ship has, if you don't count the Gatlings and the Tesla cannon. Were I a man of much lesser metal, I would be positively consumed by trepidation in the face of such firepower. Such a shame you can't aim your cannons at me. Grinning softly now, he tilted his head upwards, as if looking beyond the walls of the cabin and the ship itself. But I can aim mine at you. Every airman on the bridge widened their eyes at this thought. And what's more, continued the Hatter, turning his head to the radar display, I don't think you can see my cannons, can you? A wave of frigid anxiety swept over the crew. The maniac was right. The hysteria was still out there, lurking amidst the tumultuous clouds and undetectable to the Bellerophon's instruments. The Mad Hatter's ship could unleash a punishing barrage from its legendary artillery at any moment, and the only warning the crew of the Bellerophon would have would be a distant, muffled blast, seconds before the devastating impact. For all they knew, the captain could give the order to fire from his mad hat without speaking a word. Their frantic eyes darted back and forth between the admiral and the hatter. The admiral merely scoffed. We do not bend to empty threats, retorted the admiral. You would not give order to fire with yourself aboard here. You'd go down with us. Would I now? The Hatter laughed. I've got wings. The men were no less anxious at the Admiral's futile retort. They could feel the hysteria's guns pointing at them, but the Admiral would not be swayed. Your wings will not serve you inside a bird cage. To the brig with him, he commanded. Hang on again now, insisted the Mad Hatter before the crew had time to obey. One or two of the men shifted their weight uneasily forward and backward on their heels. They couldn't tell whether to fear the Admiral's authority or the Hatter's reputation. They were even grateful at the Hatter's interruption for prolonging their decision. I didn't think you were in charge here, continued the Madman turning his face to the command deck. I thought this was Algy's ship. Commander Fielding tried not to move. 
though he could feel the hatter's eyes burning into him from behind his goggles. He considered drawing his sword, but hesitated. Drawing the venerable falchion before this man would be a salute to him, an expression of gratitude. Fielding stood still on the command deck, his eyes darting between the admiral, the captain, and the crew. Part of him feared that Captain von Arkham might bring up the incident on board the RAS Vanguard before the Grand Admiral. But he had an odd feeling that such a thing was beneath the Mad Hatter. Firing on the Bellerophon was another matter. Fielding looked at the Admiral, and then at his frightened crew, and though his concern for the lives of his men was prominent, there was a genuine curiosity that tugged at his mind. Though Edward von Arkham was known for his maverick deeds, there was always a reason behind them. Fielding knew that the captain had a reason for boarding the Bellerophon, and from what Fielding had learned on board the Vanguard, he wanted to know what it was. Stand down, commanded Fielding of his crew. State your business on board this ship, sir, or be gone from it. A silent sigh of relief was let out by every airman on the bridge but Admiral Rockfort. He frowned at the commander's decision, but said nothing against it, respecting Fielding's position of command. The Hatter grinned wildly. Thank you, Algy, he said, slightly bowing his head to the commander. So good to see that there are some manners aboard this vessel. You try my patience, sir, sneered the admiral, clenching his fist around the hilt of his sword. Your patience, the Mad Hatter retorted. I'm still waiting for my tea. What sort of inhospitable airship is this? The gears on the admiral's mechanical eye clicked audibly as his gaze narrowed. This is Her Majesty's destroyer, and you are an enemy of the crown and a pirate. Pirate, scoffed the hatter. I prefer the term independent man of science. Commander Fielding wondered at the derision with which the mad hatter dealt with Admiral Rockfort and how far it was from the relatively earnest manner that von Arkham had treated him on the day the vanguard went down. But Fielding could see that von Arkham had no intention of speaking candidly with the Grand Admiral, whose growing temper would only fuel the Hatter's mockery and the crew's trepidation. "'What business do you have boarding us?' inquired Fielding. The Hatter slowly turned his gaze to meet Fielding's, smiling. I'm glad you asked, Algy, he sang. I heard that you were in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd drop by for a cup of tea, which I am still waiting for. The Admiral clenched his teeth and growled at this, but the Hatter kept speaking. Rather discourteous, if you ask me. I've been kind enough to share the effects of my etheric resonance scrambler with you. It does wonders for jamming long-range communications. The Admiral stepped forward between the Hatter and the command deck. The helmsman withdrew from the helm in haste at the Admiral's advance, leaving nothing between the military man and the madman but the ship's wheel. Your aberrant storm will not sway this ship from its course, heathen, proclaimed the admiral, and neither will you. Captain von Arkham threw back his head and let out a roaring laugh. The airmen cringed. Ah, yes, your solemn duty, chuckled the hatter, your sound, solemn duty.